Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to listen to what your girl have to say. We are gonna get right into this video. So I wanna give a clear disclaimer. Rail transportation, please don't come for me and don't try to sue your girl. This is just me giving my opinion because I did work for this company and this is not to deter anybody from going with this company. If you want to go with rail transportation, that is your right, do your thing, but me personally, you're gonna understand the reasons why I personally would not recommend them. Y'all, my man is in the background doing stuff around the house. So if y'all hear any clicks and clanks or see a body walking by, y'all know what's up. So let's get into it. So the first thing I wanna say about rail transportation is, if you are somebody who is a former owner operator or you're still an owner op, or you come from a company that gave you a lot of freedom and they did not micromanage you, then rail transportation is not for you, okay? Rail transportation is a company that micromanages everything down to the particle. I mean, they micromanage where you can fuel up at, they micromanage um, your 10 hour reset, they micromanage, um, let's see, the routes that you take. Um, they micromanage any incident that occurs on the camera. So I'll give an example. The 15 second rule where they want a truck to maintain 15 seconds from the vehicle or, you know, yeah, the vehicle in front of the truck. This is something that is not exactly practical because anybody who knows if you travel through Atlanta, if you travel through New Jersey, uh, PA, uh, well, you know, um, Houston, Dallas, um, Los Angeles, um, Florida, Tampa, Orlando, there are certain places where if you were to follow that 15 second gap and maintain it, you would just keep getting pushed back further and further in traffic because in places like Atlanta, where it's super packed and it's very congested, the moment that you leave a big space open, another car is gonna jump in front and it's gonna keep jumping in front. But rail is a place that they have dispatchers who have never in their lives driven a truck or been in a truck, but they try to tell you how to maneuver a truck. And that's not me trying to be funny or me trying to throw blows or throw shots, but that's just the truth and that is my experience. So I had a dispatch that would nitpick at every single thing. You know, as a truck driver, sometimes it can be frustrating. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. A lot of times I would be cursing the hell out of people because other drivers are not courteous when it comes to truck drivers. Now, people will say truck drivers aren't courteous, but we do our best with what we have. Like if we're carrying a heavy load, we can't slow down as quick. Or, you know, we need a little bit more time to maneuver through lanes and to, to get over in other lanes. So we try our best to be courteous. I can speak for myself about that. But I have witnessed time after time how people disrespect truck drivers and they're not courteous. So... You know, sometimes I would I would curse. And if you're a truck driver, you've been doing it long enough, you're not about to tell me there aren't times where you curse, you get loud, you say some expletives, and maybe the camera picks it up. So yeah, that happened a lot because I mainly would travel through places like Atlanta, uh, PA, New York. These are places where people are just disrespectful, downright disrespectful. So um, like I said, my dispatch, he was absolutely horrible. Um, micromanaged everything. Um, yeah, so my big con so far is micromanaging. Um, they micromanage you to the core and as truck drivers, we already have a hard enough job with, um, uh, making sure we keep the load safe, making sure we keep ourselves safe and people around our truck safe. The last thing we need is a dispatch that's constantly calling us about every single little thing who doesn't even understand truck driving in itself. So before I, um, got with rail, 
I worked with Warner and Warner is an amazing company from my experience. Um, Warner does not micromanage you as long as you are doing your loads and you're getting your loads on time, then they don't bother you for the most part. Your dispatch is not going to call you just to harass you about a 15 second following distance or because you're going a little bit over the speed limit. They're not going to harass you about it. That's my experience. Maybe your experience is different, but my experience is mine. And I know other people who have worked for Warner and they say the same exact thing. They're not a micromanaging company. They're really not trying to be all up in your business. They're very cool, very laid back. You just just do your part as a driver and that's all they're looking for you to do. Now let's go back to rail. Rail dictates where you can fuel up at. Warner does not do that. You can fill up at many places at Warner. For some people, especially me, I prefer Love's. Uh, maybe I'm the only one, but I prefer Love's. Love's was my favorite truck drop, truck stop. But at rail, they rarely fill up at Love's. They mostly fill up at like Pilot, Flying J's, those two in little gas stations, but loves, I can count on my hand how many times I ever filled up, um, at loves with rail transportation. So rail transportation, they want to tell you where to fill up at. They want to tell you which route to take. Now with Warner, they don't care which routes you take. If you are a truck driver, let's say you have so much experience that you kind of know your ways around the entire United States and you know, different back routes and stuff. Warner does not care as long as it is legally permitted, like you're not crossing, crossing those mini bridges and stuff. They don't care as long as you get the load safe and in a timely fashion, they don't bother you. But real, they have to dictate your route. You have to go the route that they assign you to go. Um, let's see. So I cover the camera. I cover the fuel. I cover the routes. Um, they're, okay, so let's talk about... Um, Let's talk about their facilities, right? Rail and versus Warner. I'm going to be honest and say Warner has more facilities across the United States, but naturally they are a bigger company, so that's expected. So I would say that's another con to Rail. They're a smaller company, and because they're a smaller company, they don't have as much leeway as larger companies, right? A lot of their terminals, the rail terminals, look like prisons. And I'm not trying to be funny, but if you've ever been to the rail terminal in Conley, Georgia, versus the Warner terminal in Lithia Springs, you would see a difference there. Even though the Lithia Springs, the Warner Lithia Springs isn't the best terminal that Warner has, it still tops rails terminal as far as the showers, the cleanliness, um, the amenities. It's just a lot more. Um, let's get on to the pay. So that's another um, problem that I have with rail. My thing is, if you are going to be a company that nitpicks at every single little thing that I do, at least, at least in the minimum, make your pay match your mouth. Like, Make sure you're paying me extremely well, and then I can kind of deal with the over nitpicking. But rail only pays 50 cents to 55 cents a mile. Now I'm gonna be transparent with you guys and tell you guys, when I entered the trucking industry, I entered with Warner. And flat out when I got with Warner, I was getting paid 67 cents a mile. Yes, 67 cents a mile as a newbie driver. So I leave Warner go to rail and I'm getting paid close to 10 to 15 cents less and I'm having to deal with so much more nitpicking. It's not a even trade. Um, I remember there will be times that I would have to, I literally had to get on the per diem uh, program with rail in order to even clear 700 to 800 dollars a week whereas with warner i was clearing that easily i think my lowest paycheck was around 800 dollars i would typically bring in about a thousand to 1100 and that's not even doing extremely crazy miles with rail they run you to death just because their their cent per mile is so low you have to run yourself to death just to bring in a, at least 800 a, a week. So I'm talking about 22 to 2300 miles in a week in five day period, because this is regional. So in a five day period, you have to do about 
2,200 miles just to get at least 800 to 850 a week. And that is if they had those miles to give you. Most times I averaged about 1,800 to 2,000 miles a week and that was pushing it. I'm literally pushing myself. Let's talk about the 10 hour reset. So again, with Warner, they are not so strict on your 10 hour reset. Like they're not going to nitpick you about the 10 hour reset. Like if you go a little over your 10 hour reset, it is fine. As long as you get your low there on time, they do not care if you go over two hours, three hours, just make sure that load is there on time, which all is, that's all it should be. With rail, it doesn't matter if you're gonna get the load on time, it does not matter. After 10 hours, they expect that truck to enter um, on duty and you know pre-trip and then it needs to be rolling, period, okay? There were times where I was so freaking tired. Like, let's just be honest as truck drivers, 10 hours is not a large enough gap because by the time you find parking, you park for the night, you go take a shower, you cook your food. For me, I like to cook on my truck. I was not a person who did fast, fast food all the time. So by the time you cook on your truck, you freshen up, you, um, you know, kind of wind yourself down and you finally get to bed. You have about seven, six to seven hours to really sleep. And then, you know, you have to get up to get yourself ready, you know, which is about another hour. You got to go brush your teeth, wash your face, go pee, go poop, you know, kind of get your mind right, get your coffee, you know, get out, do your, um, uh, your pre-trip around the truck. Once you do that, that's about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. But real, it's like they expect you to fit all of that within a 10 hour period. And if you dare go over your 10 hours, you're going to have to, you're going to be getting a call from your dispatch. Now, maybe this was just my luck with rail, um, being that they, you know, had newer dispatches and stuff. But I would say that's a pro with Warner is that a lot of times, with my dispatch, and I had, I think, two or three dispatches over the time I was with Warner, two of them had previous experience in trucking. So I think Warner has unlocked that um, that kind of cheat code thing, getting dispatchers who have some sort of experience of what trucking is like, whether they have spouses that are truckers, whether they were uh, former truckers themselves, um, or whether they, they just know about trucks. They've been in trucks, you know, they've done ride alongs in trucks. They, they are a lot more understanding. So, um, yeah, that, that is my overview of rail. Like I said, I 1000% would not recommend. Um, but if I had to recommend, it would be a person who is new in trucking. Like don't come from another company who gave you freedom. You need to just start off being a slave, basically. Like come from school straight to rail, get your experience and then go to Warner if you're gonna do it that way. But don't be an owner operator or, um, you know, come from uh, um, Warner or I don't know the other companies. I only work for two companies. So whatever other company is like Warner, don't come from a company where you had all this freedom. You got to, you know, have some freedom, get more rest, um, you know, fuel up whatever you, wherever you wanted to fuel up at because you love, love truck stop and you like enjoying your free showers and the amenities that loves and then think you're going to get that same treatment at rail. It's just not going to happen. They're going to bug the hell out of you. They bugged me so bad that honey, I parked their truck at their terminal and turned in my truck with the key, with all their equipment and left and avoided any other calls that came through from rail or my dispatcher. And I'm being honest and telling you guys, that's what I did because I was up to here with them. Um, so that's my experience. And that is my story of surviving rail transportation. Um, yeah. So let me know you guys thoughts about this. Do you work for rail? Um, do you like rail? If you work for rail, are your experiences similar to, to me at rail? Um, do you prefer Warner? You know, let me know your thoughts and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.